So the man Ashua Jibolak Metunubu is one of the finest politicians of his time. Some persons have suggested that his political school of thought and strategy deserves to be studied as a cause in tertiary institutions across the world. Regarded by many as the man who has never lost a political battle, the Jagaban of Africa, as he is fondly called, inspires the extreme of emotions in Nigerians. TVC News Ola Awako put together this report on Ashiwaju's days of humble beginnings. The man who many described as the most astute living politician in Nigeria was born on the 29th of March, 1952. In the United States of America, he studied accounting and graduated in 1979. Ashiwaju Bolatinobu worked in some American companies like Arthur Anderson, Deloitte, and GTE Services Corporation. In 1983, he returned to Nigeria and got a job with Mobil, a multinational oil company, where he rose to an executive of the company. Ashiwaju's political career was birthed in 1992 when he joined the Social Democratic Party during the transition program organized by the regime of military president, General Ibrahim Babangida. He was subsequently elected to the Senate representing Lagos West Senatorial District. Following the annulment of the June 12, 1993 presidential election, Ashiwaju pitched tent with the National Democratic Coalition a pressure group mobilizing citizens with demand for the restoration of MKO Abiola's mandate. Government haunting for Nadeko's key figures forced Bola Tinubu into exile in 1994. 1998, military dictator General Sani Abacha had died. The new administration of General Abdul Salam Abubakar commenced a fresh transition program. Ashiwaju and some other exiled democracy activists returned to the country. Bola Tinubu joined the newly formed Alliance for Democracy and contested the governorship of Lagos State. Today is a special day. With his victory, he was sworn in as the governor of Lagos State on the 29th of May 1999. By the next election in 2003, Lagos was the only state out of the six in the southwest geopolitical zone that the People's Democratic Party, which controlled the federal government at the time, could not take over from the Alliance for Democracy. Under the leadership of Ashiwaji Bolatinubu, Lagos State grew to become a self-sufficient megacity state. By 2013, Bola Tinubu led other Democrats to form the All Progressives Congress with massive followership from all corners of the country. The party went to poll in 2015 and for the first time in Nigeria's history defeated an incumbent president. The party also won the highest number of seats in the National Assembly and 20 out of the 29 governorship elections held that year. Due to his immense contributions in seeing the APC become a giant in a very short time, he was recognized as the leader of the party. APC! And now, Ashiwaji Bolak Metinubu will be flying the flag of the party in next year's presidential election and perhaps will become the second member of the APC to be sworn in as the president of Nigeria. Ola Awakon, TVC News, Abuja. And so joining us to speak about Ashua Jyotinubu's personality is a former colleague of the APC leader who is now the presidential candidate of the APC, a former colleague uh, at ExxonMobil, Akin Fatuke. Thank you very much and welcome to TVC Breakfast. Thank you very much, Kemi. I like I like this this slant about uh, saying we were colleagues. He was my boss. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting, and thanks for the uh, for the clarification. But Thank you. that aspect of Ashiwaju's life, not much is is known about him. In fact, we've seen um, you know that come up as a form of derision or derision to about his personality. The fact that you know he worked um, you know in the basic world out there before he delved into politics. Tell us about the significant traits of Ashiwaju uh, Tinobu then when you, you worked with him. Pure simple. I, for one, am not surprised, albeit, yes, depending on how you look at surprise, uh, I am not at the 
bottom end of surprise. I have always known that um, Bola Tinumbu uh, has been exactly what he is, enigmatic, hard worker, um, a strategic thinker, strategic thinker from the perspective of the fact that as far back as um, 4th of January 1988 when I got hired, um, great thanks to him, uh, amongst a group of Turks, he had the vision that he was going to revolutionize the audit of ExxonMobil downstream at that time. And the whole world was wondering, where is he coming from? What is he saying? I'm talking about situations where, um, Sam, you, you recall that you might have come from the Ivy League universities. But there are certain people that are die in the wood. They have been there for 15, 20, 30 years. They are professors. They are encyclopedias on two legs. They know from the unknown and they can tell you A, B, C, D. So why is Bola now coming to disrupt as it were as at that time? This was at the time of uh, you know, the DPMS, the hold of the industry. Both oil and gas and outside were really not thinking in that direction. And he said, this is what I wanted to do. He single-handedly worked something that is <laughs> like a um, form of at that time at that time. Black man walked up to the then chairman and managing director of the company, an American, and I said, I want to revolutionize this place. And I said, look, what is in it for you? It's because I want to take mobile on nigeria plc to the higher level and so he hired us we got in different talents some were writers some were analysts some were people who have uh, uh, you know the basic knowledge about computers in six months exxon mobile downstream was transformed now i say this to you kemi even when we were coming in, we were just wondering, uh, will my BSc and ACA do? He had a way of bragging at us. You guys are Nigerian accountants. Yeah, we are Nigerian accountants. We are members of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of uh, Nigeria. He said, well, what have you got to offer? I mean, you cannot talk about accountants. I would, we sit around him and we say, yes, we could make the difference. And yes, we'll be making the difference. Through that, that our institute, and uh, by the way, um, Kunle Ali, uh, Olubide Ajom Ali, mm. I talk of, uh, well, yours sincerely, Kola Fadjo Igwe, uh, Tunde Ujo, um, Akiye Lure. We Akiye all, Lure. Oh, Akiye Lure was our big boss. boss he was the yes. finance director now. Yes. So, another thing I have to say here is that uh, Bola Tinubu does not forget his friends. So, mm. Bola Tinubu does not forget his benefactors. No matter where you are or you may be, he recognizes you by name. I have not personally seen Bola Tinubu. Uh, I hope you will be listening to this. I haven't seen him for a year of years. But he sees you and he will call you by name. And I am not alone. That compassion has always been there. There is the other aspect of Bola Tinungu that I have to bring to fore here now. And that is the fact that for some of us, it was a routine that Bola Tinungu would pick us around stadium, <laughs> the national stadium, driving early enough to come to work. Then some of us could not afford cars. He would take it upon himself, drive us to the office, and his favorite was coffee. Ooh, it was a coffee, 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 coffee man. Um... On this other soft side, very, that was very American. Very <laughs> American, and Absolutely. the other soft side I need to say, and please let me say this uh, very um, silently, uh, because the wife should be able to recognize that I'm talking about. Uh, well, our senator uh, Remy Tinumbu, very interesting, very interesting from the perspective of the fact that um, a painstaking um, a woman. And a woman of prayer, none of us believed at that time that uh, Bola Tinubu was going to marry a Christian. Mm -hmm. And against all, all said, this is exactly the person I'm going to marry. And so we all found us 
Ways to the Kushibi Ala compound in Ibado, mm -hmm. and then the rest was history. Mm -hmm. Finally, here we are on the career side. What will make a man of the mold of Bola Tinumbu all through his time as audit manager at that time, because I joined that audit, to have somebody who was just the only Igbo man, the only man from the Umbu stock to be his man Friday and the second in command. Mm. He did not change him throughout. Mr. Batmore is still alive. And we all kept wondering, mm. what is it that makes a man like this tick? Mm. He believes in you. He will defend you to the heavens. Mm. He had a shoulder and he believed that uh, when it comes to Hunting for talent. I just told you he hunted for the talents of the names I've just, mm. uh, I've just raised. Mm. And elders went to him and said, some people are saying, but Latinobu, my son, do you want to send us out of the park? Say, no, if you have experience, these guys are coming. They are like the black keys of that piano of which you are white. We are going to get an orchestra. The rest, as they say, is it's history. history. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Before he left Mobile, it was... Uh, Auditor. Yes, it came. Yes. Just auditor. Yes. But it was not a position that was for him. Mm -hmm. But he, he, as you said, did something to the company's finances that transformed everything. And then they wanted somebody to become auditor. And then they said, well, we don't have any other person to do this job. See, you, you have to move. From that position you are in, you have to become the company's auditor. So Tell us about that. You are now talking in the realm of competence. Yes. And let's face it, one of the things I found with uh, my boss, Bala Tinumbu, is he could sit across you, just listen to you, and you say, I am Kemi and um, I, I am Sam. Get Bola Tinubu to regurgitate that that has been said to him. You will be in awe and a shock. He will say it and bring in the Walesho Incas and the Chinua Achebes that you may just continue to stand again. So let me put it succinctly. Yes, Bola Tinubu, um, again, we had the upstream, we had the downstream, mm -hmm. came to the upstream and then back to the downstream and somebody said that uh, this guy looks like a whiz kid of sort <laughs> we are going to try you out to take an European print view of the business and so you are right Sam mm. and that is how area of audit came like I said I came in as audit some of the assignments we did and based on some of the other things we had before he got into mobile, were stellar jobs. They were jobs that changed, that changed the direction of the company for good. We took on the high and mighty. Uh, then as audit manager, we were relentless in, for instance, saying things were not going right. Be you a director, be you a shareholder of some sort. And the people started noticing this, this guy. Hey, wait a minute. We are going to go into our other level. We are going to build that octopus to find in, in the mobile house, like one of the best that has won awards yeah. all over, mm -hmm. and said, we need a creative financier, somebody who understands accounting, mm -hmm. who understands finance, and who should be a treasurer. Lo and behold, Volatinovo was seconded to be the treasurer. There was when his star began to show. One, that Mobile Nigeria, as far back as that time, could build that edifice that was the talking town. Led Bola Ige said, I need to see the wonder that could have been done, and I hear that Nigerians are behind that. Creatively, without necessarily having to borrow, 
takes a dive to what we have here in Nigeria, he was amongst the team that put that place together, listed assets, mm. which is one of the things that we are asking Nigeria to do, mm. sold some assets that, that were, you know, um, in excess of requirement in Aiko area and put up that high rise. Or of course, Chevron and others came uh, to kind of copy. He was a vivid thinker who did not only his best for that American conglomerate and company mm. that took us to the heights of awards in the stock exchange and got awards all over Africa and the whole world. Bola Tunungu, right. from that angle, is perhaps uh, a, a, a man to beat. Now, in terms of hard work, yeah, before you go there, mm. so what I was saying was that he, he left as treasurer. He it, did the audit. He revolutionized the audit of, of Mobile. Mobile. And then they were looking for, who do we now make treasurer to, to look over the old thing? Sam, you use <laughs> the word revolutionize. Yeah. I would say, yes, on the perogative aspect of that word. But one of the audits that we did were the audit of treasury. Hmm. I found at that time that things were falling apart. Yes. He got in there, made his pronouncement. Of course, with we talks behind him, hmm. something similar to the ability to be able to spot talents. Hmm. So he spotted those talents and said, boys, I'm behind you. You go ahead. Let's see what is going to happen in there. And what was the incentive? Gave us the backing. Back at that time, very few departments has computers. And he mm. said, I'm going to fight to make sure that I get a computer. I'm going to fight mm. to make sure you get a photocopier. He made life so easy for us. So after our early coffees, we got to work and we worked so hard. So when that was discovered that Volatinumbu, you found the fault in here. <sighs> go in there, go and resolve. And rectify I it. cannot forget for the life of me. His foray into politics. And I, um, as a treasurer, had gone to Abuja and I was as Transcorp uh, children. And then, then Bola just came and said, ah, Kim, what are you doing here? I said, Well, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm doing my little work. I hope things are going on fine with you. At that time, he was um, um, the chairman of the Senate Committee on uh, Finance. And yeah. Mm. Yeah. So there was an argument. I said, oh, Aki, when you finish, please see me Come in my room. Me. Lo and behold, I don't want to go and say hello to my boss and how are you doing? Uh, I will also say one or two things about a, a few of a downside to Bolatinumbu that should be known. And then there I saw three gentlemen, the former vice chancellor of uh, um, University, uh, then University of Ife, now Obafemi University. One day Abimbola. One day Abimbola. Mm. And then Polycap Mwete. Yes. So apparently they were in some form of discussion. And as I entered, rather than uh, Bola Tinumbu, uh, allow me to, to calm down, cool down. I just wanted to say hello to you. Say, hello, Aki, come. Um, now, can you tell me, Aki, how we write our reports when mm. we get audit findings in mobile? Then, uh, Is this what you call <laughs> I, <don't, laughs> no, no, no. I was initially confused. What has mobile got to do? To I do know about confidentiality. Mm. He said, what I say is that if you found that um, a bachelor is at fault. And we, as auditors, have found at fault. Do we shake? Do we speak a language that mm. is... Uh... And then my brain recalibrated. Very easy. You could have gone through the audit of mobile at that time for you not to know. And so, if, uh, for instance, Sam decides to be a transgender, mm. <laughs> I say, Sam, I know you to be a man. Effective immediately. Revert to how you should be. I said, Hmm, that is my man. And then Professor Abi Mola then said, Ah, but you know, in Sisa, we can't use that kind of uh, language. He said, Well, if that is what you people used at that time when you were immobile, so be it. And so they now wrote their report at that time and said, Effective immediately, A, B, C, D should be done. And that was, and that was it. 
Now, let's talk about some other uh, maybe salient points about I'm, I'm Bola sure, I'm sure that, that will be equally interesting. But I, I really must ask now, you've spoken a bit now of, and you've opened um, up the largely obscure world, especially for many of the observers out there. Mm. The question I want to ask now is, when you look at the smear campaigns about the personality of Ashuaju Tinubu, when you look at what people say about him, some are even questioning his ha academic credentials and, and all that. How do you respond to them looking at the exploits that he did in the commercial, in the business world before his foray to politics? Kemi, I say this to you. One of the things that um, we learned in Mugul is the hard <coughs> skills and the soft skills. There are certain skills that you have that take you to the door, your degree, your capacity to be able to do. And then, of course, the soft skills will now be how to navigate your, your way around. Your emotional intelligence. Smear campaigns, emotional intelligence. Uh, Sam got that uh, on, <laughs> on, on, on the heat. You decide that your focus must be go win the prize. It is not totally out of place that even when we were immobile, people could come up with different spurious allegations. I am not going to go into the integrity of what, what allegations is what and what have you. But the American system is such that what is your deliverables? Can you deliver? And are you delivering to time, to budget, and with a lot of integrity? The Americans saw the integrity behind a man who decided to come and destruct the system and brought in young people that easily could have been people that could have upstaged him. And he said, no, I want to live amongst the talent. I want to live and do my career within people who are of diverse background. You may be Igbo, you may be Hausa, you may be Lupe, you may be any of the, of, of the ethnic relations that we have in Nigeria. What have you got to bring to the table? And then, are you capable beyond the academics and do the extracurricular? How have you been able to develop the corporate image of the organization, the brand image? And they looked at that, and some people now asked the question We thought you were an accountant. Where did you pick all these skills from? The average Exxon mobile person, both male and female, in and uh, who have operated in and outside Nigeria, Ghana that we are all mm. talking about today, mm. Ethiopia that we are all talking about today, <laughs> Zimbabwe in the day of Bob and all that, respected that aspect amongst Nigerians. And there were people of Nigeria, some of his colleagues, in fact, one of them that eventually became the first Nigeria managing director went and did great things outside outside the country. So at the end of the day, if you had um, a faulty vehicle out there, and somebody came and rather than turn it back into a vehicle, turn it into a helicopter, what will be? <laughs> how will you now want to regard that person? That is one. And for us in the oil and gas industry, safety is number one. As at the time Bola Tinumbu was now going to his Fedeco, uh, Nadeco, Nadeco. Uh, <clears throat> and what have you, right. um, I am happy uh, I need to announce here, not many people, not many Nigerians, and I hope Bola Tinumbu and uh, Remy Tinumbu will take a seat back and consider what I want to say now. Um, Bola Tinumbu won the APC ticket on a day that is called June 8, 2022. Exactly 24 years on this same day. 8,767 days ago. His nemesis, 
in the person of Sunny Abacha passed away. Mm. Is that not a significance that somebody should now look at? How come? How comes it mm -hmm. that that is happening? Mm -hmm. um, Remy Tinumbu will have been on the other side because uh, the guns came and they bombed his house to smithereens. Luckily, part of our training, some of the soft skill training, is that intelligence gathering and intelligence information comes to bear to making sure what you are seeing, what you are not seeing, what you are reading, we put all that together, which is one of the great traits that Bola Tinubu, I must say, has. So when it comes to issue of security and all that, you'll be shocked that an accountant in his board right. will be able to think out of the box. Let me say this, he, he detests lawfulness, hardworking expects you to work at that same level. And um, I've just told you, he believes in talent, he believes in loyalty, yeah. and he has an attitude. And that attitude is, I can do it despite all the challenges. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm still yeah. talking about... Yeah, yeah, about yeah, 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 there's, yeah, there's uh, one question I want to ask. We okay. have run out of well, time. Because we have run out of time. Yeah, yeah, there's so much to say, but you seem to have so much to say. The thing, the thing, the thing is... One of those people who actually worked for uh, at at uh, at Ashuraju when the election was going on, one of the foot soldiers told me in those days during the do the those uh, all those battles, he walked up to me and he said, "What I learned from Ashuraju these past few weeks." Even in Harvard School <laughs> of Government, he wasn't they taught. Won't, nobody <clears throat> will teach you the way he. Did you see anything, any, any of that kind of intuition, that instinct for what, what the right step to do, what the right step to take? We I can only allow about ten seconds. Ten seconds. Uh, apologies. Ten second, apologies. I saw it. Second second, <laughs> it was all there. Right. Third second, it was even there. About part of the legacies that he left behind. Many of the all people right. who are now, they were young then, and they are now captains of industry he elsewhere. Gave people, picked that right. from Balatinubu, and I say, um, I wish Balatinubu very well. Right. And uh, we've gotten a dogged fighter. Mm. We've gotten a All man right. who has okay. decided, and okay. we decide that All he's right. going to take you to the next level. All right. Thank you so much, Akifatunke, for your um, valuable and fascinating um, this uh, this conversation that we had with you. It's really valuable and fascinating indeed. And we wish you well in your own endeavors. Thank, Thank you, you very once much. again. Thank you, Thank you, sir.